July 17, 1945. As World War II comes to an end, U.S. President Harry Truman, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin meet in Potsdam to decide the fate of Europe. The talks are marked by ideological and geopolitical disputes between the Soviet Union and the Western Allies. Finally, agreements are reached to divide defeated Germany into zones of occupation. The leaders shake hands in a show of solidarity. But soon the Soviet Union and the Western powers find themselves bitter enemies in a dangerous worldwide confrontation known as the Cold War, that over the next four decades threatens to become a hot war resulting in nuclear annihilation. Each side of this conflict believes that the survival of their respective economic and political systems is at stake. The Soviets are convinced that America intends to destroy communism, potentially through the use of atomic weapons. Americans fear that the spread of communism threatens their freedom and way of life with a system of government based on terror, oppression, and loss of individual liberty. In the years after the end of World War II, Stalin engineers elections in Poland, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria, and a coup in Czechoslovakia designed to bring communist governments to power. By 1948, the Soviet Union effectively controls all of Eastern Europe, and within another year, communists control mainland China. In June 1948, Stalin orders a blockade of Allied-controlled West Berlin. No food or fuel will enter the city from the surrounding Soviet territories. The Western Allies begin a daring airlift to supply the city. Eleven months later, Stalin backs down and ends the blockade. The United States, Canada, and ten European nations signed the North Atlantic Treaty on April 4, 1949, creating a collective security arrangement that they see as a deterrent to Soviet aggression. But without a military commander, NATO remains only a weak political alliance. Then, on August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union successfully tests an atomic bomb, obliterating America's sense of security. The United States nuclear monopoly has been the only assurance against the Soviet Union's conventional military superiority. Suddenly, the U.S. and its allies are left with little to prevent a Soviet advance in Western Europe. In June 1950, a new war erupts in Korea, putting the rest of the free world at risk. Western nations know they are too weak to prevent Stalin from swallowing up the rest of Europe in the same way. American and European leaders turn to General Dwight D. Eisenhower to provide leadership as the first Supreme Commander of NATO. For the first time, a collective military force will be assembled not to wage war, but to keep peace for the duration of the Cold War.